In this video, I'm going to show some examples of how you can implement formulas and equations in C Sharp. So first, let's go over some tips for implementing formulas in C Sharp. Number one, be careful about the order of operations. A lot of times, mathematical formulas are written in a formula notation uh, that assumes you know, multiplication, addition are going to be uh, performed in the right order. But in C sharp, you must specify exactly the order that you want the operands to, um, or the operators to execute in. There is a precedence that is defined in the language, but you should use parentheses to just very clearly specify uh, how your equation should uh, execute. Watch out for integer division. A lot of times, formulas will have integer division in the formula, but in C sharp, if you divide an integer by an integer, you will lose all the decimal information after the division. So integers dividing by integers always produce integers. So watch out for this. Um, when you implement a formula, I've, I see students, when they are first getting started in programming, a lot of the times they will implement the formula first and then initialize all the values that will be used in the formula second. You want to make sure that you initialize your values first, then implement the formula. Um, if you want to use the result of your formula later on, make sure you save that result to a variable. Often I see students implement formulas inside a print statement, which is okay, but when you, when you use a right line statement and then implement the formula inside the right line statement, you are only printing the result, you are not saving the result. So if you want to use the, that result, that calculation, later on in your program, make sure you save it to a variable. And then finally, I will introduce the math class. The math class is a class in the .NET framework that contains a lot of methods that can help you solve for things like square roots, powers, absolute values, sines, cosines, etc. Now the three formulas we are going to implement are shown here. I just grabbed these from the web. First is a body mass index formula, which calculates your BMI based on a weight and height value. Then I have the formula to calculate or to convert temperature Fahrenheit to temperature Celsius. And then I have the famous quadratic equation to help calculate the roots of a polynomial. So we are going to try to implement these three formulas in C sharp. This third formula will be things like a square root and power, so we will need to use that math class to help us implement this equation. Then we will look at Einstein's, I'm just kidding, let's stick to the, the basics. Okay. In my sample code here, I've commented out the formulas we are going to introduce. And I just, I did not use valid C-sharp notation here when I typed in the formulas. I just wanted to type in a placeholder so I knew what the formula needed to be. So for example, often in when you're typing out formulas, you will use this little up caret to, Im to indicate that something is a, is a power, raised to the power, h squared. But this is not a, this symbol here is not a valid power operator in C sharp. So we're going to have to come up with the C sharp way of implementing each of these formulas. Also, for each of these formulas, I have a test case. So I went on the web and, and found a calculator and typed in some values, got a result. Whenever you are implementing a formula, you want to make sure that you can test that formula with some real values to try to, to try to see if your implementation, your formula implementation is incorrect or not. All right, let's get started. First, we'll, we want to calculate the body mass index, the BMI. So BMI takes a weight and height value. So first I'm going to declare the variables to hold the values needed in the equation. So weight and height. So let's make a double weight variable. And I'm going to initialize it to the, be the value 173 pounds. Then I'm going to make a double height variable. And I'm going to initialize it to be the height 5 foot 10 inches. So 5 feet is 60 inches plus 10. That should be 70 inches. And so now we have some, val some variables and values initialized. So we can use these to test our formula. 
Next step is to create a variable to hold the result. So we're calculating BMI. So I'm going to create a variable called BMI. And now let's implement the formula. We have the values initialized first, formula second. Now my formula is the quantity 703 times weight divided by the quantity height squared. So I'm going to use parentheses to specify the numerator and the denominator of this equation. So the numerator is 703 times weight. So let's type that in here. Here I have an, an algebraic expression that will multiply the value 703 times my weight. Now I'm dividing by height squared. Now the square of something is just multiplying a value by itself. So I can implement the height squared by just typing height times height. And then hopefully that will work. So 703 times weight divided by the quantity height squared. Let's print out the result. Console.writeline BMI is, we'll limit the output to two decimals, print the BMI and see how close we got. 24.82, we're right on the money. So the first equation looks good. Now I can change these weight and height values and the BMI should be calculated uh, should change accordingly. Second equation is Fahrenheit to Celsius. So here I have a Fahrenheit value as my as my operand and I'm trying to calculate the Celsius. So first let's declare Fahrenheit. I'm going to use double again and say double FAH for Fahrenheit and I'm going to set it equal to 70 or 67 degrees because that's our example point we want to test. That's the only variable in our equation, so it's time to calculate the results. So I'm going to make a double uh, Celsius variable, and that's going to be equal to the quantity 5 divided by 9 times the Fahrenheit minus 32. So I'm trying to implement this formula. Now this formula is written as one value in parentheses immediately next to a second value, but we can't assume a multiplication in C sharp. I have to put the multiplicating operator between my two expressions. Okay, so 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. Now let's print the result. I'm going to say console.writeline. Let's say this value in degrees F is equal to the second value in degrees C. And then I'm going to insert my Fahrenheit and Celsius values. Now I know, I see an error in this equation already, but let's run it and, and see the error be calculated. So here at the 67 degrees Fahrenheit should produce 19.4 degrees Celsius, but it's producing 0 degrees Celsius. But I've implemented this formula, 5 ninths times F minus 32. So what's going on here? Well the problem we have is I have integer division. But integer 5 divided by integer 9. 5 divided by 9 is some value less than 0. 0 point something something something. But that point something 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 is lost due to integer division. 5 divided by 9, int divided by int, gives me the integer 0. So even though we have a double value calculated here, and even though we have a double variable to store the result, this expression is going to evaluate to the integer value 0. So we're losing our decimal value, our decimal portion of the result of this division, and it's, it's ruining our formula. So how can I fix that? Well, I could convert this formula, whoops, sorry. I could convert this formula, one of these values, to be a double. So now an integer divided by a double will give me a double result, and it will save that precision. So by converting integer 9 to the double 9.0, now we see that 67 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 19.4444 degrees Celsius. So this is an example of where integer division can bite you if you're not looking out for it. Okay, the final uh, example here is the quadratic formula. Here I have negative b plus or minus. So there's two pieces to this. There are two roots. So I'm going to calculate this. I'm going to implement two equations, one to calculate the, po the positive side, and then one to calculate the negative side of the root. Now this example polynomial here 
x squared minus x minus 6, the three coefficients a, b, and c are 1x squared minus 1x minus 6. So the, the variables I'm going to be using in my equation are going to be int a is going to be 1, int b is going to be negative 1, and integer c is going to be negative 6. These are the, the, the uh, coefficients of this polynomial. Now this polynomial will factor down into the, the factors x plus 2 and x minus 3. Therefore the roots should be negative 2 and positive 3. So we're going to use this, these inputs to test whether our formula is implemented correctly or not. So here I have, I've declared the variables that hold the inputs to my formula. Now let's implement the formula. So I'm going to say double root 1 is equal to this whole quantity, negative b, plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, divided by the quantity 2a. So again, I'm going to divide my numerator and my denominator and put each of them inside a pair of parentheses. Now 2a is easy to implement. I could say 2 times a. So my denominator is easy to implement, but this numerator is a little bit more tricky. How do I do negative b? Well, negative b is just negative 1 times b. So I can say negative 1 times b plus, and now I'm going to, again, I'm going to use parentheses to, to separate uh, my terms inside this numerator. So negative 1 times b quantity plus the square root. Now how do I do the square root? Now here we are going to look into the math class. The .NET framework contains a math class, and if I say math dot, I'm going to get an, a, a whole list of ex, uh, methods, mathematical methods that I can use from this math class. ABS is absolute value, we have cosines, sines, exponentials, logs, etc. But I'm going to use the SQRT method, which stands for square root. The SQRT method returns the square root of a specified number. So math dot square root of what? Well next I want to do the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So how are we going to do b squared? Well I could do b squared by just typing b times b. That's b squared. But I'm going to show you the power method. Math dot pow. The power method takes some value x raised to the power y. So if I want to take b raised to the power 2, I could use math.pow and pass b first, the power second, b squared. And this is, this is a way we can use the math method to find the power, something to the power of something else. So math.pow b comma 2 gives me b squared minus the quantity 4ac, 4 times a times c. Okay, now we got to check all of our parentheses. So math.pow minus 4ac, here's the parentheses for the square root, but I'm missing the closing parentheses for my numerator. I think this is going to give me all of my parentheses. This should implement negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, full quantity divided by 2 times a. Now for the second square root, or the second root, I'm just going to copy this formula and change the plus to be a minus, and then we should be ready to go. We'll see if we get it on the first try. Console.write line. The roots are 0 and 1. And I'm going to insert my root 1 and my root so hopefully this should give me the values negative 2 and positive 3. Uh, negative 2 and positive 3. So we've implemented those, those equations correctly. So in all three of these cases, what we've done is we've declared and initialized the, va the variables that are going to be used inside the formula. Then we carefully implemented the formula, and we created a variable to hold the result, and that's it. So I hope this kind of helps 
your mind organize how you might attack a mathematical formula in your C-sharp program.